yes. Um, I am Kelvin Thompson, and I am your motivational, I'm your can of business motivational counselor. Um, I'm serving your local area with personal counseling and advocacy for what we know as marijuana abuse. Going through a, be a brief history, um, cannabis can have many benefits. Um, cannabis and it uh, can have potential harms also. Um, individuals can suffer from respiratory, shortness of breath, bronchial cloggings, mucus, and wheezings. It may uh, interfere with your ability to randomly pull words out of your mind instantaneously. High dosages uh, may result in hallucination, paranoia, and not knowing your location if you are known to be uh, schizophrenic. Oh, uh, here's a quick video. So apparently this guy was going through some of these these um symptoms. Uh, you could make you, you might he probably was hallucinating when he was talking to the to the uh, officer, and um, he probably was in that state of mind when they walked in on him. He was hallucinating or schizophrenic or something of that nature. Um, secondhand smoke doesn't really apply to marijuana because. Secondhand smoke would be considered like somebody smoking a cigarette on you, and you're getting you you inhaling it, but you're not smoking it. Uh, marijuana goes by the term of uh, contact. So contact occurs when um, a person becomes high when he or she is near someone who is currently under the influence of some sort of illegal drug. In this case, it's cannabis. Even if the person receiving the contact is high, um, they they didn't take the drug. So that's so it's two different terms. You got uh, you have uh, contact and secondhand smoke. So some people might say, "Oh, put that weed out because you're giving me secondhand smoke." You're not getting secondhand smoke. You're getting contact when it comes to the weed. So you know, or as uh, so you got to look out for these, you know, I, what I would be clarifying certain things for uh, certain people who don't really understand, you know, some terminology, you know, like, you know, the difference between cigarettes and smoking or drinking and driving and smoking weed and, and driving. Um, we will create many ways to cope with and balance your usage through activities. So it would be nice to have something going on while you taking, you know, smoking your smoking or uh, 
CBD in it or at the restaurant or something of that nature. Um, if you abuse it, then you should take take less of it. So if you smoke every day or if you vape every day or um, if you pop edibles every day, then I would advise for you to do it every other day. And then, you know, once you come down from that high, try maybe every third day of the week, sometimes probably just on the weekend, you know. Um, there's many different methods to enjoy your uh, there's many different methods of enjoying your state of euphoria uh, here's another video this one I should play on the on the screen so these are the, some of the things you should do to not be excessive in you you using um weed and stuff. We have worked over the past three years with provincial governments across the country to move forward on a regime that controls and regulates the sale of marijuana. Pot may be legal come October seventeenth, but where you live in Canada is going to determine exactly what that means for you. Across the country, the minimum age for buying and consuming marijuana is either eight So Canada, they have these a whole bunch of uh, stuff going on within this change. Um, as an advocate, I would like to tell people who don't smoke and drive, but you know, if that's what you do, then that's okay. But mainly because they have so much new laws coming out and you don't want to get caught behind the wheel trying to defend something from 1925 and it's 2019. So um, avoid driving, avoid speaking to people or be around people who speak too much and ask unnecessary questions and stay fo focused. And um, mainly because you might tell somebody, hey, I'm high, you know, I'm high, man, you know, and then they might follow you or do everything you do, you know, you get in your car and then now they're like, oh, he, he just said he's this and then now, you know what I mean? Because people would, so you got to protect yourself when you, you know, when you, uh, there's different alternatives also than getting high or if you're in a state of being um, in a euphoria, you can also, in, instead of driving, if we had this facility or a facility, we would um, have, we would incorporate uh, meditation and yoga, 
which in meditation and yoga is uh, can be a way to escape from others' influence, another way to centralize your balance and concentration. We could also bring in a, a yoga master to teach the basics on yoga and meditation, preferably Egyptian yoga and as or asana, asana yoga. Um, yoga can have many benefits and philosophical principles. Um, comedic yoga places emphasis on rejuvenate. Re rejuvenation of the entire body and mind, or entire bo body, mind, and your spirit, and not just the physical. So uh, yoga helps you develop the outer muscle and flexibility. Egyptian yoga specifically helps maintain your parasympathetic nervous system, your PNS and uh, sympathetic nervous systems this works together to help you cope with your daily life and flexibility. So if you're smoking, you know, or you're taking um, edibles and stuff like that, yoga is a good way to maintain flexibility. You know, so you're not just, you know, clumped up in the house and just sitting down watching TV, you know, getting a hunchback and stuff. You know, you might feel like you you know, you're, you're on a state of euphoria, you don't have much, nothing much to do, maybe you could pop on a video, you know, or if you're at the facility, we'll have these uh, programs going on. Um, here's a quick video also. So here is uh, uh, Dr. Asa Happy. Um, this was from 2010. But um, he's incorporating Egyptian laws and uh, hieroglyphics into yoga. So he's showing you that, you know, here's a, here's a whole nother study and a whole nother focus on what we might think is just gods and goddesses, you know, they're doing yoga. You know, and Asia and Africa and all these places, they grew hemp and they had the culture of it too. Um, outside of that, uh, with, at the facility or we'd have, uh, let me get off of this page. So at the facilities, we would have areas of partaking in topicals such as smoking, vaping, dabbing, hash, oils, edible, recreational refreshments. During refreshments, you can strengthen your body, mind, and spirit from like when after you come home from work or school, you know, you, sh you should watch like stoner movies while you're getting high because there's messages in, the, in, the, in those, you know, just getting caught up with he say, she say while, while you're under the state of euphoria might just change, you know, change your mind thoughts because your endocannabinoids are always being active. So, you know, when, while you're in that state, you know, probably do your homework or do your, your work for tomorrow or get yourself ready for the next day or meditate and uh, or watch stoner movies. Listen to stoner music. Um, so if we had a facility, we will be playing, we'll have our own playlist of, uh, you know, like Cypress Hill, Bob Marley, stuff like that. Um, another thing that I would like to mention, we provide social conversational dialogue. So just like, you know, while I was, you're there at the facility and you, you know, everybody's coming in with their own issues or whatever. We have social conversational dialogues. Um, whenever you have your alone time, that's the time that you enjoy yourself for feel, feeling uh, socially accepted. You, the euphoria gets enhanced medita meditatively 
uh, feeling a, a joy and uh, or, or yeah you could enjoy some uh, pre-roll sativa cannabis rolled up whether it's from Porter CBD or some infused I don't know if Dan's gonna have some stuff available too or after you leave the facility you can have the app on your phone you can have an Uber app call and tell with the facility lift or you can have a family member that's not uh, into cannabis and not into talking on their phone while they're driving and uh, drinking alcohol you can have a family member come pick you up from the facility and then take you to your destination or Uber because there's proof and you have to beware of new laws like DUIW, driving under the influence of weed. These are new laws in Canada, in our neighboring country, Canada. Don't drive high, your life can change in an instant. So basically what they're trying to do is what they did to people who used to drink. They don't have a, they don't, they don't have no new test to say, well, you're high or not, or they don't know how to use it. So they're still using breathalyzer tactics. And a lot of people is falling for it, you know. And um, I guess as soon this was out of out of out of this is not in there, but the I think the first day Canada was legal, there was about four or five people that had got charged with like five hundred dollar charges because they didn't know that they couldn't drive. So if they had came spoke to me, I would have told them in advance, like, don't smoke and drive because it's legal now and there's new laws. Um, driving high can reduce your ability to make instant decisions. Most individuals are easily distracted by cell phones that can cause them to take their eye off the road and into a car accident. In Canada, new legislations uh, similar to such for drinking and driving, our duty is to make people aware and find a level of information to keep people safe and meditatively euphoric, euphorically enjoy. And uh, there's, in order to get this started, I'd have to get patent um, application, registration fees, and uh, a facility, and a lot, all of these in there ethnobotanists, cultivators, manufacturers, educators, which would, I would be under the form of an advocate. So it's kind of like knowing the laws of marijuana and um, registered practices. So it's a quick, oh, also another thing I wanted to show, which is new, there's charges. So your first offense is a thousand or ten years imprisonment. The second offense is straight you go straight to jail and possibly here and probably that same fine. The third offense is this, that, and probably that same fine. Or refusal to comply with the demand. So if you if they say, hey, you need to take a breathalyzer for, for marijuana and you don't, it's two thousand. And there's nobody going up against the, the lawmakers right now, like uh Cheech and Chong or anybody of that nature, they're not going up against these kind of laws because they're already placed. You know, so nobody, so these are the things we need to worry about whenever it get, becomes legal because, you know, somebody needs to create a law for the, can, the cannabis people. But in, impaired driving can cause bodily harm and uh, some years, maximum 14 years in jail or $2,000 fine plus all of the above. And so-called, if, if they can't tell, because your blood alcohol content, so if they can't tell, these are the statutes that they will try to regulate if you're high or not. So be careful while you're out there. They're advocating too. 
you know, they want it to be legal. And that's what I'm here for, support, advice, guidance, assistance, and help. Okay, can you leave those up? Okay. Um, anybody want to give feedback? What was the name of it again? Uh, the Canada, the Canada, Canada Business Motivational Advocate. Yeah. Like set up like yeah. a gymnasium or something. A little mini yeah, like a med. Yeah, like where we would be doing yoga, because I don't I don't know if I'm gonna have like basketball and you know all of these sweat bound um, activities. You know those have have a different culture to it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I want to keep it like you know something calm, cool, and collective, and at the same time help healthy and helpful. You know, you don't want a bunch of, while you're in there and you're getting high, you don't want a bunch of sweaty guys running up and down the court, you making all these noises and, you know, you want to have a real calm environment when you under the euphoric type, you know, you don't want to, you know, go to, well, have that at the, at, at you know, at the facility. If you want to go and get high and then go play basketball, then that's, you know, you go to the basketball court for that. If you want to go, you know, smoke and play football, that's on you. But another thing is if you're playing football and you know, all these other sports and you're under the influence and maybe you might say, oh, the court had a hole in the, in the floor and then you might want to sue the court, <laughs> it might not work for you because if you go to the hospital and say you just broke your leg, they're going to blood test you. And if you're under an influence of something, you might not get that lawsuit. So you have to incorporate some sort of, uh, we're going to sign a waiver or something to make sure any sort of physical activity or something like that if they are under the influence, I guess. I yeah, because I you had asked uh, Rob about if, when they're leaving his restaurant. So that's that's the part where I said, you know, you could get a family member to pick you up, or even maybe the facility could have their own transportation, a van or a bus that picks you up Fridays at, you know, or Thursdays or whatever your schedule is to be there in the groups. Um, also, we we'll probably have like a registration fee and whatever, whatever we use at the place, like the CBD or the food or anything comes with a cost. So you either have a membership package where you deal with it or you deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis and some of that money is gonna go to having, you know, the yoga yoga man come by or so or have some visitors or something of that nature, you know? Okay, so <clears throat> you have a lot of really strong ideas, uh, but I'm gonna give you some really harsh criticism. Okay. Um, you just really need to take it in take it down, right? So you were 20 minutes for the 10 PowerPoint slides, which isn't bad and today is great because uh, we can really go through this at length. Um, but you're gonna have 20 minutes to do 15 to 20 PowerPoint slides. So you need to really, can you stop there? Really challenge yourself to take it to the bare bones and figure out what the structure is of your work. So you don't have to go through and explain this, right? In some ways, this visual isn't even necessary. Um, a much like um, kind of the Canada reference. So you can say Canada is what you've used for your market analysis, but we as your audience don't need to know a lot of this information. Um, you know, you don't have to explain that to us. What you would need to do for the sake of this assignment is really just put in your business plan and you're the person that's going to um, give your members all this information that you're gonna give them and give them access to all this information so that they can be well-educated consumers. But that's really as far as you need to go because think about all the other information that you wanna give, right? Um, so also specifically to just the framework of a business plan and market analysis, who is your target demographic? 
Um, people that abuse marijuana. But I question, and I would suggest that isn't the case, because you're also supplying marijuana and you're encouraging marijuana use. So how can it be that? Even if you're trying to provide um, counseling for alcohol, or I'm sorry, alcohol, uh, cannabis dependency, and supplying marijuana at the same time, there's a huge conflict of interest there. Um, questioning even just if it's a psychological trigger for that person to be at the space when they're trying to kick the addiction and then try to supply them at the same time. Um, but then I would say as well, you really have to... Well, I, I never said... I never said anything about kicking the addiction. I thought you just said. No, I'm. I, it's for people who abuse it, right? But these are different things you could do, you know, like counseling them, telling them, you know, instead of smoking every day, smoke every other day, you know, or if if you know if you're in a in a bad environment, then you can come to our facility where we have we do this, or you know, we have not that black market stuff or that street stuff, we have some, you know, some stuff you could try if you're trying to come down or you got some stuff if you're trying to come up, mm -hmm. you know, but if you want to channel what you do with it, these are things you could do. Meditate, yoga, you know, music, um, uh, and uh, also, you know, com have uh, social counseling. Okay, yeah. so just make sure that's clear then. Um, and then also, the, it's hugely problem problematic for you to be um, discussing or engaging kids, anyone under the age of 21. Uh, oh yeah, I did, I did take that out. I was gonna say age appropriate at the beginning here. So make sure you t take out after school and those types of comments that are suggestive that you're targeting targeting an underage audience, right? Um, so can you go back to one of your last slides uh, that had the red writing on the background and it kind of discussed all of the things that you needed to have your license and fees, et cetera. Okay, great. Can you blow that up? Yes. So I question on a lot of levels um, if all of this stuff is necessary. So, you know, I guess I'm curious about the manufacturing and the processing. If it wouldn't just be easier for you to get that. Uh, well, these are just also. types of license. And I was just saying I would need at least one or two of these in order to run a facility like that. Well, I think that you would need a uh, patent for the advocacy part, and then New York State ranging from application fee with uh, the, the state and the federal and register. Well, there's a, a lot of really confusing information here. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, what is the application fee for? Because what kind of service are you providing? And are you supplying marijuana? Because well, you, you, need a, you need an application and any for the, for the application was, is for the license. So it's any one of these license is $1,000. I, I just don't know if I believe that because ethnobotanist isn't a license. Do you know what I mean? So. Okay. I guess my point is is really focusing on what what you're you're looking to provide here. Um, a service. Yeah. So, if you're providing a service, I would argue that you don't really need those licenses. That really, what you're going to need is something like a registered nurse on staff and certification in counseling. And um, if I. I think that to get to the cannabis point of that, you're almost a dispensary, right? So you're taking people that at this time have to have a marijuana um, uh, intake. Yeah, well, medicinal marijuana card. Um, 
they have to have that, right? So that's something that you could definitely put in your membership fee. Um, I guess that's another thing I would encourage you to do is think about the cost structure of your the service and your membership fee. Um, so what are your licensing requirements to be dispensary? Because to me, the most interesting part of this is you taking something that's being marketed as medicinal and you're providing a holistic service to attach that to. That's the counseling, that's the yoga and the meditation. And there are a lot of people that work with parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous system and how that's important to get through stress and trauma. And they do that in educational frameworks at UB, um, Dr. Suman Dolce, and then you have people like Duke Krause, where that, at least as far as my understanding, he comes from this really holistic background. So it's kind of fascinating that you're, you're jumping between them and you're saying, you know, there's people that are trying to supply this, there's people that are trying to supply this, but there's few people that are trying to supply them both. So that's your edge, that's your market, right? Right, so when, when, it, when, it, when it becomes legal, right, um, that's you can merge those two in well, the, in really the sense to talk about now okay that's assignment. so I would say um, you can think about or you can put this business model out as is as it is what it is and you can target medic, med, uh, medicinal marijuana patients and forget about supply right mm -hmm. that maybe can be something you bring in later um, or if you really want to, consider a dispensary and, and think about what it would mean to be a dispensary and have these classes. Um, and have people that could come in that have, that are doing work in that field that you're interested in and they can give and provide these classes, right? Um, but then also, at bare bones, maybe it isn't. But you can definitely do this work with CBD. Okay, because CBD is already being marketed as something to, to use for uh, PTFD and stress and trauma, et cetera. Um, so think about the place where these services can fill that blank, and that's what's fascinating, right? And what you're thinking about providing in these kind of even alternative approaches to yoga through the, you had listed the comedic, and really narrowing down to the parasympathetic and sympathetic, which is, to me, the most really interesting approach in, in validity for yoga, uh, justification for yoga as therapy. Um, you know, but again, you really just need to take it down, to narrow it down and figure out what is the most interesting, what is the most applicable, and then take it all the way back, once you have that list, to the business and market analysis. Because for you specifically to get that end product of the final presentation, you're gonna, you're gonna have to just check, check, check every item off the list. Okay. So you're going to have to present your business plan, you're going to have to present the market analysis, you're going to have that introduction, which the last sentence that you had is your mission statement, right? And that's really what you should lead with. Lead with it and end with it, because I think there were a lot of points where there was um, some confusing inf information. And also, um, what was really good is that you started in the role of the service that you're providing, that's great. Um, but then when you got into um, the 911 call, um, yeah, that was effective because you were giving a case study and you were showing that that is something that's a real need. Um, but you have to be very careful that the information that you're supplying and your argument go hand in hand because when you're saying that that could be um, schizophrenia, not really. You know, so look at it for exactly what it is and make sure that that argument is supportive of what you're trying to get across. And I think that, you know, that's always the case when you're trying to put out too much information, right. is that that information starts to work against itself. Right. Um, because it's almost impossible on some level um, with the time frames that you have to try to really, to put it together on, on that higher level, right? So just stick with the shortest way to get there, which is just, you know, building on the pertinent points of, of information. Um, and again, I'm a resource. So if you have any questions, email me at any stage of this game. Just say, this is my thought process. This is where I'm at. Can I get some feedback? And I'll give it to you um, as quickly as I can. Um, but this is, Again, when Drew Krause 
is presenting next week, you should ask him very concisely. Um, you know, does he consider uh, his work in CBD to have any effect in um, or with alternative types of therapy? Again, I guess again, something that I had mentioned is how could you describe this in three sentences? You know, because when you're thinking about your pitch, right, your pitch should be three sentences or less, really. How do you take it back? You can say there's a need, and then you, could su you can supply the need. How are you gonna supply the need for therapy? I think that, again, the therapeutic end of what you're trying to supply is innovative, but also the fact that you are suggesting that you're supplying a service that is custom to uh, marijuana consumption, whether that be, uh, like you're saying, the legalities, but what about the different types of strains, right? So you can incorporate a whole service in just customizing the strains of marijuana with the, the consumer's needs. Right. That's a really uh, valid concern that people have uh, that, you know, who else or where else are you gonna go to have that met? You know like, a, I mean? like a weed doctor? So, yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, and again, I think that role is just tying all of this stuff, tying knots and all of this stuff that have huge gaps in it, right? The therapy end of it, um, trying to get people to identify with this highly exaggerated, uh, highly potent marijuana field and, and CBD world. Um, you know, what service can you provide that aligns all of those things? and. You know, again, you need some statistics. So as a $30 billion industry, how do you fit yourself in as a niche market? Right. Um, okay, so really well done. Thank you. Uh, some really good ideas.